Welcome to another edition of What the Fuck Happenings Here. Yeah. Close enough. Anyway. <laughs> right here. Sort of. Anyway. Um, Alright, so a couple of things. Um, somebody sent me an email asking for a debate. Don't even know who this person is. No, nothing. You know, and on this Discord server. You know, like it's some special place, Discord. Like with different people in it. What the hell was that? Never heard that before, actually. Better check. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Nothing's going wrong with the recording. It doesn't appear. Uh, so I have no idea what that meant. What the hell was that? Anyway. Um, maybe it's somebody outside. Anyway. Sorry. Distractions. Happens. Um... All right, so so uh, you know, but the whole concept of debate has really no purpose if, like, this person you want to engage with is perfectly willing to answer questions. Then what do you need a debate for? I mean, you don't really need. I mean, I need to debate somebody on physics because you tell people about how crappy their evidence is and they don't address any of those issues at all. So you sort of need to debate them so you can force them to answer the question like, well, why haven't they done this? And why haven't they done that? And isn't that suspicious? And, you know, you have to get them to actually say somehow that it's not or that it is or whatever you're looking for is an answer. So anyway, um, so obviously I'll, you know, somebody can ask a question, I'll answer the question. Um, so what's the problem? What do I need to debate you for? Then I can go back to the whole point about you know, this is a video medium. You can make your arguments in a video. You know, it's not that hard to do. Um, and so what's the what's what's this debate thing needed for? Um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, it's just about arguments. That's all there are. There's just statements going to be made. And so what do I have to debate anybody about? Um, I evolution is a done deal okay if you don't believe it you're really really fucking stupid and there's four million arguments out there you know kind of proving it so i don't need to argue or debate evolution do i i mean i'm am i especially needed in that conversation uh dawkins can't take care of it somebody else can't do the job well enough um i don't think so um and uh, you know the fact that what's the implications of evolution is pretty much that we're just robots um, just functioning like any other organism we have the basic blueprint you know mouth and ass and we just control you know with this brain thing where the mouth and ass go and what exactly they do um, for a purpose of you know gaining energy so you can lay eggs and um, take over the world kind of thing um, the model of the DNA is pretty obvious, so there's nothing to debate here about our origins, except in the sense that some people just refuse to accept reality and have all kinds of delusions about gods or spirits or spirituality or some other kind of bullshit that we're supposed to uh, possess. You know, we're special bugs. You know, we're not just bugs. Um, you know, smart bugs. And as I pointed out, smart doesn't mean much. Smart just means scheming. You know, we're better at scheming. We're better at figuring out how to kill stuff and, you know, <laughs> use it and abuse it and, you know, suck the life out of it, squeeze its guts out. You know, we specially prepare, you know, <laughs> other organisms. We can pull all their bad bits out and just eat their good bits. And, you know, we, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're talented at abusing things. But that's it. You know, for the same purpose that all the other organisms are out there eking out their personal um, survival. And that's it. And that's the only game we're really playing is to satisfy a bunch of impulses that compel us to push through this humus, this dirt that we're worming our way through. Um, and um, so I would argue that, yes, somebody has a little bit of brains, understands it's not just dirt we're worming through, that we're worming through other people's welfare, you know, that all the other worms are involved in the worming, and, you know, you can't get what you want without sometimes brutally taking it from somebody else, and, um, you know, if you have, then somebody else has not, and that's just a fact. You know, if the orange is in your hand, it means it's not where it would have been. If it's not in your hand, it would have been in somebody else's. Um, you know, your wife, everything, every part of your life is in some way or another 
um, a modification of the muck that we're squirming through and you can change the muck for the better or you can change the muck for the worse and unfortunately in an awful lot of cases we can't tell the difference between good and bad because all we can tell is probabilities you know you're less likely to cause harm with your car if you're driving slower than if you're driving faster simple little equations we can uh, figure things out that uh, you know we can reduce the risk of failure and destruction and damage um, but not too many people are too preoccupied with doing any of those calculations that's clearly obvious um, the human race is an embarrassment to intelligence that's a simple enough argument I can make the statement that we're embarrassing our intelligence um, if this was a show you watched on TV and the characters were rats instead of humans and you just showed what the rats are doing you know they're wearing their little towel on their head and bowing to Mecca and you know <laughs> they're doing all kinds of little you know, smoking urns and little Pope hats and you know you can find all the ridiculous nonsense and you just say what silly fucking idiotic rats I mean these rats aren't even funny I mean they're just stupid um, yeah, you know, you know, the, and so the, the truth is there is a truth uh, to be defined and described. So the argument starts with, yeah, we're just biological organisms hatched on a planet of biological organisms, you know, a plant that's making robots, you know, because there's a DNA molecule. We're just a variety of robot that has a little more capacity to see and manipulate and, um, you know that capacity gives us the capacity to do stuff that might be meaningful might actually be relevant and you know purposeful in some kind of other for some other reason than how many termites can I get out of the mound and can I get more termites than the other guy and you know instead of just this competing to s decide what kind of hairy ape inherits the hairy ape world you know who, who cares hairy ape hairy ape hairy ape what's the, what's the difference um, you know, it's all, you know, it doesn't go anywhere. We see that it doesn't go anywhere because it's, the stuff has been evolving a long time and it just makes a lot of monsters. It doesn't really make, um, charming things. You know, everything is, can look pretty and we know it can sting and it lays its eggs in your brain and it does this and it does that. Oh yeah, it's very pretty, but, you know, it's not very nice. Um, that's the, clearly the model. Uh, so anyway, so that's uh, that's what we are. We're just robots. We're programmed by our environment. Clearly, you know, your parents fuck you up. Your TV fucks you up. The, you know, your school fucks you up. Your teachers fuck you. Everybody fucks you up, and that's it. And so, if you can survive all those influences, trying to turn you into a piece of shit and an idiot and a dancing rat, you know, with an umbrella and thinking you're doing something. If you can avoid all that crap and actually be a serious human, actually have a serious brain that actually has a serious thought now and then, the thoughts won't be anything good. I mean, they're just going to be recognizing, oh shit, most of the rats are imbeciles. I mean, idiocracy, uh, idiocracy always, it always existed and <laughs> we're just becoming dumber and dumber and dumber and we're deliberately emphasizing it almost. We're coddling the stupid and the retarded the imbeciles, the mess makers, we just keep making excuses for them. I mean, so the politics sucks, the, everything sucks, it's just garbage. And yeah, you have this little charming bit of life where, you know, uh, beauty, you know, overwhelms you, um, you know, and you do your little humpy thing, and you have this little, ah, oh, moment and uh yeah and then you go wait until it happens again you go searching for it again so you're just chasing a little piece of gold around and around and around and around um you know and you can figure out if you're smart that oh yeah that's all i'm doing i'm just chasing desire i'm not really getting anywhere <laughs> you know, <clears throat> the amount of time i'll spend comfortable on this planet will be a lot less than the amount of time i'll spend uncomfortable Either because I have to work, or I got chores, or my desk is messy, and I gotta clean it, or you know, tedious. Gotta educate myself, so I gotta listen to some turd who's you know, ten percent value and ninety percent, you know, ninety, um, you know, mush and, and drivel. I mean, everything about life is you know, 
this doesn't work quite right, that's not quite enough, this isn't quite this. It's all a bunch of tedium and monotony, most of it. Um, you know, just all the little aggravations, uh, you know, the little miseries, the uh, arthritis starts showing up, and this and that, and you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't get better, it just gets, you know, grindier and grindier, and you get a little bit better at, at just waiting in line. You know, you get more patient, maybe, in some respects, and then you run out of patience in other respects. Well, anyway, there's just, there's nothing to describe here. So they're just saying, look, I'm just making an absolute statement. We're just dumb robots. If we are smart, then we're going to figure out we're playing a really dumb game. It's hopscotch. It's just this moronic idea. Throw the rock. Go get the rock. You know, this, <laughs> there's nothing here. Oh, I won a big, huge victory over some, you know, dumb rat that has a broken leg. Uh, you know, I won for some reason, and the reason's not going to be because I'm spectacular. The reason's going to be because I have some advantage. I went to a better school, or I did this, or I spent more time practicing. Um, there's nothing meaningful in any of this shit, um, this, this competition. Um, anyway, so there's just two conclusions. There's one argument that just says, I know from personal experience and from just observing that life is more cost too much, right? So if you're going to go buy it at the store, random living life, I'm going to buy being conscious at the store. What you're going to get isn't worth what you're paying, okay? So the odds of getting the bad life are higher than the odds of getting the good life. And, um, you know, however you want to do the the calculation. The calculation's not going to work out. You're going to pay more than this stupid thing is worth, and that's what it's going to be. And then there's this more, the the bigger picture kind of argument that just basically says that uh, yes, that's true, and it's true not just because of how your life is going to turn out. I mean, you are going to be killed. You're going to be murdered. You're going to get the electric chair, and you're not going to commit a crime to do it. Now, you might get lucky and die in your sleep, but most people aren't going to do that. And so you are going to be punished, in a sense, okay, for being alive, because it's going to kill you, and it's not going to kill you nicely. Okay, it's going to kill you just as if you had committed the most heinous crime possible. Um, and that might be your fate. And there won't be any justice to it. It won't be, you're a good person, so we'll cut you some slack. Um, you didn't make too many messes, we'll cut you some slack. The reality isn't going to work that way. And um, so there's just nothing to be gained here. And then the other, I mean, the quest, the statement is, life sucks. You want to pretend it doesn't? You want to pretend it's perfect and wonderful? No, it's damaged. It's, it's way too much, again, more pain than gain. Uh, the gains can all be understood as just gratifying some other pain. Okay, you have some dissatisfaction that you have to deal with, some horny, some desire, some um, thirst, some hunger, um, and without that it would mean nothing. So you're just really trying to get rid of an annoying itch, okay, and find some way to scratch it. And you shouldn't have had the itch in the first place, is the simple solution. Um, scratching the itch is not some magnificent accomplishment that must exist in the universe scratching itches that never needed to exist it's you know, circular and pointless there is no real value there's just your perception of value you think it's important that your fantasies are realized that uh, you know somebody actually makes the Puss in Boots movie <laughs> you know uh, that somebody makes the Scooby-Doo show. <laughs> you know, it's not just lost as an idea. No, we actually waste, you know, artists drawing Scooby-Doo. I mean, this is the world you think. It's you think that somehow it's important that if the Scooby-Doo drawing doesn't exist, that will all, oh, it's catastrophic. Oh, my God, no Scooby-Doo in the universe. What a fucking tragedy. And you kind of think the same way about your dopey life, like somehow, oh, it's just critically important, and it's critically important that my my genetic code gets, you know, uh, turned, I mean, you know, mixed with somebody else's, uh, you know, that I chose for rather superficial reasons, and, um, you know, that, that, that monster take over for me in some bizarre way where they're supposed to be just like you or something, and they'll be 
pretty much nothing like you, and we see that statistically as the fact. I mean, you know, yeah, the acorn doesn't fall very far from the tree, but the fact is, is the nut is a lot different than the fucking nut that dropped it. So what's the difference? You know, you're not dropping the same tree. It's going to grow into something liberal versus conservative versus, you know, all kinds of wacky crap. It's not going to be a very good representation of you um, at any rate. And you have no control over it anyway, and it's just terrible. So look, and so look, the fundamental argument is is, is every piece of information and every fact um, draws you in to the conclusion that this is just not a good idea. That you know, having little organisms born into the world and struggle and die in all kinds of horrible ways, and often as children. Uh, you know, in most cases for the animal world, um, just brutally murdered. And doing that over and over again, only somebody pretty psychotic and crazy would sit there and sentence something to do that over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And over. To die in all these horrible ways over and over and over again. Why do that? <laughs> Stupid. There's nothing to accomplish. There's nothing to do in the universe. There's no wound we can heal. There's no brokenness the universe isn't hungry for our existence we're not going to satisfy we're not going to fill its belly in any way you're just filling a delusion you're just satisfying some notion in your head that we're winning and that we're good and that we're fun and you know we're special or some other kind of crap and there's just nothing special about it we're just another variety of suffering organism on this planet and none of it needs to exist just like scooby-doo none of it is going to enhance the universe the existence of it. So that's the fundamental conclusion. The more specific conclusion to your individual life is a recognition that you have no real right to sit there and decide for other things that they should exist. You have no right to play Dr. Frankenstein. You have no right to dig up the dead guy, pull his brain out, and stick it in another uh, victim. You didn't ask. <laughs> you didn't get consent. And you have no reason to think you know best. You know for them that it's going to be worth it to be born your child and find out your father or mother's a fucking idiot. You think you have a right to impose that on something. and You have no such right. You can't defend any such right. There's no reasoning skill that you have to defend it um, in any way that you have a right to tell somebody else it's worth it. What do you base it on? You have no facts. You have no overwhelming volume of facts to prove the case that you're doing somebody a favor by giving birth to them um, that you're just as mo you're just as likely to create somebody damaged uh, who's going to have a very hard life and who's going to have to struggle and eke through it um, as you are somebody who's going to find it all easy and fun um, there's at least an equal probability of those two things and there's this the, it really doesn't matter because all you need is one huge liability. All you need to be is, is torturing one person to have your party. And your party isn't over, already, you can des describe your party as not worth it. Um, that's my assertion, that no decent person tortures somebody, okay, to please somebody else. Nobody sensible does that. Um, so, that's it. What's, what's the debate? There's, there's no debate. You either believe in some wooey, phantasmagorical, fake world. Uh, you either think you're not bugs with a, with a little bit of scheming skills. Uh, you have some grandiose notion of a universe full of intelligences that you know go around baking cookies or whatever. I have a great cookie recipe. Let's exchange recipes with the aliens for cookies. Because that's all life is about, is eating a good cookie. I mean, you're either trivially retarded in the sense that you just have a silly notion of reality. But if you take any of this seriously, then you recognize there's all this horror out there. All these terrible, sad stories. Um, dismal, hard, brutal failures out there. Um, they're on the street. You, you walk over them. You can smell them. You, know, you can smell their failure. It's really easy to see, and especially in the animal world, it's really easy to see, um, you know, that it's, these are all kind of hard and brutal stories of, uh, you know, evading the cars and getting your little nut and 
burying it so you can eat it later and blah 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 and none of it's all that good and it's just a struggle to survive and you know you get mites and you get this and you get that and then you, you know you struggle struggle and then you 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 eke through a bunch of disability and beat up. I mean, I see it here with, like I said, the feral cats are an issue with me. But you see that you see it happen. You see them grow old. You see them, you know, not that old actually, but you just see them deteriorate and how the environment beats the crap out of them, and they just keep fighting and fighting until they die. And it's just terribly brutal and horrible. And if you had any decency, you'd say it's yes. I'm not doing anything that's good enough. To justify that as a price that has to be paid, these failures are not uh, are catastrophic, and I would not impose them for anything I'm doing. I can't possibly do anything fun enough to justify that tragedy being part of the price. And what's so? What's complicated about the argument? The argument's not complicated. Um, if you believe you have a right to impose life, then you're playing God, you have an insane, I'm arguing, I'm stating right to you, you have a <laughs> preposterously uh, exaggerated and, and nonsensical notion um, of your own authority and where you derived it from, because there's nowhere to derive it from. You're taking a crazy risk for absolutely no good reason, and there's absolutely no way to defend it. It's like some asshole, you know, I don't know, holding a baby by its hair or something and, you know, banging it into shit and not giving a damn. You're clearly just not giving a damn. You just don't care how much it costs. You don't care who has to pay the price. Um, you're not cognizant of it. You're not um, in any way respecting it. You're just pretending it doesn't exist because everybody else is doing it. I can do it. And that's it. It's just, it's, you have a baby talk as a fucking argument. You have no argument defending yourself as the grand authority on worthwhileness, <laughs> you know. And the obvious fact is, is you just can never justify it. Nobody decent, nobody rational, nobody with any kind of of of, of sense of of adding two plus two correctly. Again, can justify doing something trivial at the cost of something horrible and catastrophically bad. No one. It right? can't be defended. Right? You can't take stupid risks with something else's welfare. It's just not done by anything reasonable. Um, and again, you can't make any argument that there's anything necessary about any of it. That any little tiny shred of our existence has any use or function. That it's accomplishing anything good. So, anyway... So that was one little thing that happened. And then I noticed that some of the the ghosts of the past, anti-bullshit man, I didn't notice. Somebody sent me links, of course. <laughs> and then Professor Anton and Thou Art That, and whatever, they're sort of making more videos, or I don't know. Anyway, somehow they're showing up <laughs> on people's radar. Um, and it's just, you know, it all seems so silly. Um, and it just... This is what people are wasting their time talking. This is how they talk, and this is what they talk about. I mean, it's... Oh, who the fuck would care? Um, it's so distant from getting to the point. Um, and... Um, so, yeah, I, you know, I'll play some of that just for the hell of it. <laughs> you know. Um, but anyway, yeah, so, so the basic arguments are so simple that, you know, blah, blah, blah. So the other subject that's sort of in the background of this is just thinking about the whole point of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it, and you know, it's it's uh, the, the the thousands of videos to try to get to this point of making a point, and you're saying sort of, uh, well, yeah, that's all practice, and I should be able to do the whole thing in you know a 10 minute video and get to the the basic core of this thing, um, and get it be done with it. Um, it's, it's not that complicated. It really shouldn't be that um, difficult to task. But obviously, people have been working at this for a long time. You know, the argument between the intelligent and the retarded in terms of a, arguing against religion, the silliest of failures to uh, use brains properly. I mean, uh, you know, belief without reason, you know, 
I have faith. Well, what the fuck is that? I have a superstition, is all you're saying. I got this weird, queasy feeling when I, I said, oh, okay, there's no God. And I, then I felt all uneasy because I thought God was mad at me now. You know, some kind of crap like that. <laughs> it makes me uncomfortable not to believe because I'm scared. I mean, you know, what if I'm wrong and the fairy tale is true and Scooby-Doo really exists? I mean, it's just too silly. Um, that you can't overcome, you know. Uh, and oh, my whole social network is dependent on, you know, socializing with a bunch of rats that are silly as fuck. Well, why are why why are you thinking you you have to build your life around that? Well, anyway, so I mean, all that can take a lot of time to argue because it's all psychology. It's all built into somebody's psychology. It's not built into somebody's logic skills. It's built into their emotional um, dysfunction. The fact that they're still owned by their emotions. That's all. That's why these people cling to their spirituality and cling to their free will nonsense and cling to the... It's, it's an emotional problem. It has nothing to do with doing logic. It just has to do with the fact that they're still little kids and they're still driven by, uh, you know what they feel, uh, you know, rather than thinking, <laughs> you know, they haven't, they haven't understood or they haven't had the, the triggers in their own personal life where they realize just how bad their own psychology is, just how crass and greedy and nasty they are as a biological organism, how selfish and how manipulative and how everything they do in every single relationship is always some sort of calculation. You know, nothing's any, it's very almost non-existent, any genuine, you know, uh, sense of giving to anything. You're trying to bribe women to sleep with you and you're trying to bribe other people to stay connected to you and you're always just trying to maintain some sort of horse shit. It's just disgusting. And once you see that in yourself, well, then you're all, you're stuck with this alarm that keeps going off that says, uh, fact check, you know, <laughs> you're just scheming, aren't you? Um, you're not talking the truth and living in the truth. And so the same thing happens with their clinging to these bullshit ideas it just has to do with clinging to the, the socialness or this. They can't live without some little element of this that's feeding some need or dependency in their psychology. And that's why they cling to it. And that's why they put on their little black suit and have their little, you know, you know, have to wear on their sleeve. I'm this kind of religious kook, you know, I'm part of this silly club and it's all club membership and you know, it's just... Yeah, it's disgusting. Um, so, anyway, let's see. Anything else to say on that? Uh, yeah, so the imposition argument is the argument for from an individual's point of view in terms of just saying, what are you doing as an individual? And how dare you tell other people what's worth it? I mean, really. <laughs> you know, no. You have, to, you have to, default has to be first do no harm. That has to be the default. And if you can't understand that, you're really fucking dumb. You have no right to be aggressive in how you play this game because the welfares you're playing with are not yours to play with. Uh, you, know, you just have no right. Um, and then beyond that, social contract kind of statement that you have no right to impose um, is the bigger point that just do the math, just do the logical equation and you can figure out that this is nothing. You're chasing gratification of needs that shouldn't exist in the first place. So their gratification, even though you think it's just so valuable and precious, this little love thing you're going to have or this, uh, you know, I acquired a mansion and a yacht or whatever the hell you're after that you think's feeding you that's fun. <laughs> that's just a dumb notion in your head. It isn't really doing any of the things you think it's doing. It's not as beautiful as you think it is. It's not as pretty as you think it is. And if you really analyze it, you can understand it's just another aardvark ass. You know, it's just another um, thing that doesn't isn't here for any real reason except to replicate a DNA molecule. 
uh, the whole your whole every bit of your functionality just is 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 a consequence of that process of just compelling worms with a mouth and an ass to keep pushing through crap and there's no reason to accept that as that's what I'm going to do because that's what I'm built to do no that's stupid if you have any brains you know you don't have to do that all right so uh, I guess we're doing anti-bullshit man first. We'll play a little. Well, maybe we'll switch back and forth. So he's he's defending uh, Stefan Malihu, who, you know, despicably stupid human. But anyway, he apparently got kicked off of YouTube. I don't nothing about it. It does seem, okay, uh, on the surface, YouTube never provides any explanation. So right there, they should be they should be disallowed from censoring or blocking or kicking anybody off their platform if they don't even have enough courage to explain why they did it. Now in the Alex Jones case they had some reasoning in the fact that he did violate the terms of service overtly. I mean they told him not to do certain things, he did them anyway. So um, they had some kind of argument that we gave him plenty of warning that he was in violation of our terms of service. He just didn't give a shit and he kept doing it. So, yeah, we, we, we kicked him off because he couldn't play by the rules. Now, I don't know whether Molly Hugh got any warnings about violating any rules or anything like that. So, apparently not. Then it is pretty bogus, okay? I mean, it's just, you're just like, okay. So, you blocked him because you don't like he's making arguments that are hateful or you know he's he's saying something that a smart person shouldn't be saying okay can't block people you can't you can't um deplatform people for those reasons and be called fair in my opinion i mean this is this is the public square now are owned by these corporations and we chose to make corporations in charge of our whole internet and that's just a fact, and I don't think it's a good idea to sit there and let them make these decisions. So it should be something the voters of YouTube decide, the producers of YouTube. I mean, we can change who gets to vote, you know. You can, you can make a system that can have some kind of editorial credibility, and so use that system. But anyway, I mean, arguing about it is just arguing. Yes, corporations do whatever the fuck they want now, and usually they can just uh, survive any negatives that come out of it, and it'll all go away eventually, and blah, 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 blah. So, yes, they can make a calculation that's to their advantage, um, and um, that's not very good. It's, it's tragic that we have allowed our lives to be controlled by YouTube and Facebook and all these stupid, idiotic companies that are just sucking add dollars out of us you know um, and obviously they're playing to the idiots you know the people that are persuaded by ads they have no interest in the rest um, and so uh, maybe all of us have um, our time is uh, you know our days are numbered in terms of having uh, a platform uh, and then you're numbered in even having, uh, being on the internet. Again, Google doesn't really give a shit about indexing the internet, frankly. It's just indexing the popularity streams, you know. It's just, in the end, it's just going to be Fox News and CNN, and, you know, you're just going to have propaganda channels and very little hope of getting anywhere rational or reasonable. Uh, but anyway... So we'll just play, uh, you know, anti-bullshit man, in my opinion, is just totally useless. He's just forgotten how to speak English. Uh, his, all his, his whole vernacular is just bogged down in a, in a bunch of excessive, insane, um, um, fancy word kind of bullshit. I mean, it's just so undown to earth undirect, un you know, just state it plainly. Why state it in all of this special um, philosopher vernacular? Which doesn't mean that it's got its moral theory set in stone, right? All kinds All right, we know there's no moral theory, so why even messing with the words like moral theory? There's right and wrong, there's good and bad, okay? You don't even have to have a conversation about a moral theory. 
Okay, you could say your your value premises. You could say something like that. So yes, it's all bogged down. Everything's bogged down in your value premises. Do you value ghosts and uh, you know magic beings and bent space? Do you value that kind of quantum fun? <laughs> you know what are you valuing? So different moral thinkers, moral philosophers. So whatever that even means, right? Moral philosophers. Why why are we getting bogged down in a term like that even? Again, it's just about this simple equation. I mean, either matters that you can fuck everybody. You guys can burn down my neighbor's house. Should I do it just for fun? Because I, it makes me happy. Is that a complex moral question? <sighs> Shit, I don't think so. And everything about our life is doing that. The fact is, if the orange is in your hand, okay, it's someplace it wouldn't. It would have been someplace else. It's just a fact. You know, and so. Is it in a better place that it's in your hand? Is the orange better off? Is the world, is the universe better off because the orange is in your hand? Or would the or, or would the universe be better if the orange was in somebody else's hand? And you can say that about the gun. You can say that about the red button. You can say that about anything. Can take on a given political philosophy like liberalism. So liberalism, it's just such a silly word. What does that even mean anymore? I mean, clearly... I mean, it happened with the Republican Party, you know, back in the old days with Lincoln. What the fuck is a liberal? Um, and so this whole term doesn't even mean anything anymore, right? Because liberalism 15 years ago was you protect the workers and you, you know, you guaranteed wages and you do all this stuff. You don't import a bunch of people to drive wages into the toilet to create a, 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 a welfare state and do all of this stuff that's completely corrosive. Okay, um, to any sense of having a society that can function. And so, what, is that liberal now? You know, liberal is what? So it, it never meant too much. It still doesn't mean too much, these words, liberal and conservative. Obviously, the conservatives are not very conservative. Uh, okay, they waste energy and threaten to blow, you know, nuke, <laughs> nuke the planet. I mean, they were never conservative. They think we should all be risk takers and, you know, uh, you know, invest in, in crap in the stock market and all this kind of shit. Where did they ever do anything conservative or careful? Where, where do they pay the bills? Do they pay the bills? No, they borrow and spend, right? So the ones who say that we should never consequentialize, then they are actually, to the extent that they endorse the liberal tradition, then they're played by the paradox of tolerance because they can be intolerant to the intolerant so as to maximize tolerance in the long haul but <laughs> yeah so he's just playing with a bunch of terminology that never meant anything anyway right i mean this whole tolerance thing never really meant anything right i mean how much are you supposed to tolerate how exactly how smelly can the homeless man get well let's tolerate well nobody can go into the library because it smells so bad I mean, you know, there's certain points where you just say, no, you can't tolerate that anymore. I mean, I'm just using, you know, gross examples, but there's a ton of, you don't tolerate people that can't get a driver's license and don't do this. And do, how much tolerance should there be for people making mistakes even? Or how much error code should be in their functionality? <laughs> this word doesn't mean anything, okay? Because there's no such thing. Oh, there's some nice principle. Let's be nice to each other, okay? So, and let's not be anally insane in our in our definition of a, uh, a violation of a principle let's understand that law is a little bit nuanced there's a difference between you know accidentally killing somebody and deliberately killing somebody yeah but i mean this this words these words don't mean anything tolerance doesn't mean anything a box standard consequentialist wants to endorse the liberal tradition well, you can easily get around the so-called paradox of tolerance because he'll say, yes, let's be intolerant to the intolerant because that tends to actually make it easier for us to... Uh, again, again, so what? So as a liberal, you know, this liberal tradition, no, the liberal tradition pretty much was, no, religion is nonsense, okay? You don't put it on the same scale. It's, a, you know, it's not liberal. Liberals were just as interested. Well, they're showing it right now. They're just as interested in censor censoring as the um, the the, uh, the the Bible kooks. And the the more the more extreme, the fact that the two extremes are the only thing that's newsworthy, right? What did the craziest right winger do today, and what did the craziest left winger do today? That's the news, okay? The news just cares about what the fringe cares about, and that's it. 
because news is about blood. News is about funny. News is about all kinds of things that don't have anything to do with let's have a conversation about where we should be going collectively as a society and a civilization. Which ones of our laws need to be fixed because they're not working? Well, obviously the lying one isn't working very well. I mean, there's liars all over the fucking goddamn place. So maybe we ought to fix some of our legislation to make some of it actually work. I mean, you know, yeah. But no, that's not being liberal because the liberals are saying fuck having any laws about immigration and law rules about what a citizen is and, you know, any of that kind of crap. And again, what's liberal about assholes who want to bring in, a, you know, the liberal tradition, again, was intellectually, pro-intellectual, not pro-religious kook fanatic. So all of a sudden now the liberals are for importing a bunch of religious nuts. I mean, is that the liberal tradition? I don't think it's the liberal tradition get around to tolerance in the long haul, to, to maximize tolerance, as it were. Like, if we identify tolerance as an intrinsic good, let's say the only... Oh, thing. yeah, well, yeah, so, yeah, sorry. I don't see that as any kind of a rational argument. Tolerance is an intrinsic good? In what way? It's a word. Okay, let's tolerate dysfunction. Well, no, let's be sensitive to the fact that people aren't perfect. Well, sure. But tolerant? Tolerant to what? Again, anything? Anything goes? That's tolerance? No, that's stupid. ...the source of the intrinsic good, then that's very easy. You can see how it would be very easy to get around the problems to that, because we would also, by stipulation, identify intolerance as the intrinsic bad, and minimize that. So, it, that's just, this is just mush. Well, this wasn't, at least he wasn't using all his philosopher talk here. But obviously, using a word like tolerance as if it has a definition in the first place, as it could possibly mean anything to a serious brain. <laughs> what does it mean? It doesn't mean anything. It only means something in the context of you, if you create the boogeyman of... Uh, religious intolerance, right? I mean, that's the, the, the one that's the example. We are the chosen people. Fuck everybody else on earth. Well, yeah, that is an example of intolerance. It, you know, makes uh, it, it easy equation because that's just fucking insane, okay? Our gang is better than all the other gangs and, you know, we're the ones that should have controlled everything for what reason? You know, everybody should be us, you know. <laughs> you no, know, not necessarily. Prove that first. We can have you do just about anything. I get it, yeah. Um, from a video standpoint, is there anything you've uploaded over the last couple of weeks that you think has would have uh, warranted this return? Is there something that when you put it up, you're like, oh, you Apparently he's being interviewed. Stefan Molly here is being interviewed in a video and talking about uh, getting kicked off of YouTube. And so now he's being asked, did you do anything, you know? In the last two weeks, besides blackface, <laughs> you know, besides that, did you do anything? Are you sure how that's going to land? Well, certainly nothing. I mean, I've always, I've, I've always tried to tell, I've always explicitly and directly told people, you know, you can use your words, not your fists, you know, reason with people and peaceful solutions to these kinds of challenges. So, I mean, certainly nothing like that. Um, I did have... Um, a conversation, had a great conversation with Tommy Sotomayor. Well, I don't think he told that to the Second Amendment absolutists, honestly. Because if there's one too many policies they don't like, uh, specifically in terms of gun control, it wouldn't be about using the words in the fist, because they cite one of the biggest reasons. Well, whatever. So this seems a minor point that uh, over my dead hands, or whatever the hell they say, um... You know, I'll kill you first. Um, yeah, so the gun nuts are nutty. So what? Uh, but yes, you can't say, you know, the, the argument would be clearly, yes, Stefan Malyu doesn't advocate direct violence, but he obviously, you know, he, he was kind of like saying things like you should disown your family. And, you know, some of these things are going to be violent to your social interactions. So in that sense, he's advocating a kind of social disorder that's violence or chaos or you could say rebellion 
So right-wing rebellion he's inciting, you could argue, pretty aggressively. But clearly the morons on the left are clearly inciting a bunch of left-wing chaos and rebellion that's completely pointless, like let's just burn down Google or something. You know, no, that's not the answer. <laughs> you know, looting and pillaging. And we know it just incites a bunch of people who aren't really there for the purpose, the principle. You know, they're just there to um, be, you know, like like mar Marines or something. They like the violence. They cite the absolutist, not all, but certainly the absolutists. Um, it is because that at some point they're saying, no, we're done using words. We're going to use not our fists, but we're going to use our rifles to shoot down, well, not just the government, but anyone who will be in favor of the governments. And hell, even the ordinary citizens who may have driven the government to pass some law that we dislike. So if you're going to say words, not fist slash... <clears throat> it really wouldn't matter anyway, right? I mean, short of an explicit statement, if you're going to sit there anytime anybody implies anything, or even jokes, I mean, if I joke about a, oh boy, it'd be nice to have a steamroller... You know, I'd really like one of those. Um, I'd have a lot, lots of happy accidents. That'd be really nice. Um, the fact that I could gleefully imagine a bunch of Republicans getting run over by a steamroller, I'm not even able to talk about the fact that I can gleefully imagine such a scenario, that I'd like to see it. It would, it would please me to actually see it because they're such scum. They're such lying, hypocritical, dirtbag scum. You know, they inherit money and then tell other people to pull their bootstraps up. You know, that kind of crap. Somebody that low, somebody that despicable. They inherit it and then they tell some other asshole, pull your bootstraps up, buddy. I mean, fuck that asshole. He's such an asshole. Yeah, run him over. Squish him any way you can. I'll enjoy it. If I if we could make a big giant quicksand pit to throw them in, I'm all for it. I'd vote for it. Yay! No, I can't say that. <laughs> you know, well, yeah, that's pretty silly if we can't do that. I can't honestly explain um, how, yeah, I think there are cr ethical crimes that are just that egregious that fuck this bug. This bug is way too much of a mess maker. All right, he's he's disgustingly inefficient in its function. It's too ludicrous. <laughs> you know, it's too silly a bug. I mean, it's like a radioactive bug or something. You gotta squish that fucker. Rifles, then you actually do have to add the slash rifles in there, but you never do that. Yeah, I mean, clearly, on a, on a philosophical level, you can have this conversation. The social contract is necessary. We need to have a civilization. But I'll also clearly admit that if I have the advantage, and I'm not going to go to prison, or I'm not going to be assassinated, that, uh, and I have the opportunity to violate the social contract to do a good, I'm going to do the good, because the good outweighs the bad of violating anything called a social contract. Social contract is just there for convenience it's not there um you know for anything else but then to create the ability uh, to have a civilization but you can't deny the fact that if they had the power they would abuse it and if i had the power sure i'm going to use it um so the social contract has to be strong it has to be well enforced um and we can all vote for that that we all need to be obligated to play by these rules um, but yes some events are going to be outside the rule book and in those cases you'll take your advantages um, because we either believe or we don't believe um, I don't think you can rationally believe um, that you have a right to impose on others I just don't think there's any reasoning that can defend that uh, that isn't completely moronic the DNA molecule says so well DNA molecules don't have brains <laughs> they're not qualified. They're not doctors of medicine. They're not doctors of anything. Uh, why, why, why is their opinion respectable? About policing, and uh, he's uh, this black commentator on YouTube and other places. He's also got a lot of hits uh, over the years. And we've done a couple of shows together that was really great. And, you know, maybe because this... Yeah, just bashing welfare and pretending that the welfare trap arguments have not been responded to. 
Well, and that they haven't been made forever. So again, it's just such an easy target. But clearly, there's a problem in the sense that the obvious truth is you feed it, it grows. That's the obvious truth. So there's a point where you have to have a real answer. And the real answer is just don't pre pretend it's not a problem. And that's what the left has done. It's pretending it's not a problem, that somehow it all works out okay, that all of these welfare people end up not being welfare people. Like like the Muslims are going to come here and breed non-Muslims. You know, like the... You know, these are silly notions that aren't based on any kind of statistical truth. And so you're not going to be doing yourself a favor in the long run. So you do need a real solution. And the real solution isn't to say to everybody else, you've got to spend a zillion dollars turning these people into real people. You know, we have to work doubly hard or triply hard or quadruply hard. I mean, how disabled are you allowed to be and how much is society obligated to pay? So the nutty right-wingers force us to pay billions and billions of dollars to keep dead people alive. I mean, it's an insane waste of money. It's just, it's so stupid, and it just gets dumber and dumber. As the technology gets more and more advanced, they're spending more and more of our social um, money um, on health care because they have these silly expectations that they can defeat death. Uh, you know, and that somehow it's fun to die more than once. Um, so, I mean, these unrealistic expectations and unrealistic solutions exist. And the real problem isn't having this stupid right-left argument. The real argument to be had is, is what are the solutions? What will cure this? How much will investing in the cure cost? Well, it'll cost you some unpleasantness in the short term where you say, well, yes, realistically, a society has to, people have to be able to read the stop signs. So, yes, realistically, we all have to function within certain um, um, rules of, of being able to communicate. We have to have some sense that we can communicate with other people we're living next door to. So we have to speak some sort of common language. We have to have some kind of common culture and some sort of realization that just because you like the music doesn't mean I have to like it. <laughs> okay, that you do some things in private. You don't do everything in public. Uh, you know, <laughs> shit. Which they have been. I'll list just two papers that look at the welfare... I, I mean, really, the, all of these subjects, this whole race thing, this whole culture thing, that's all it has to be understood as. This is a cultural war. They're making it a race war for really moronic reasons. I mean, just as dumb as the Nazis and as dumb as the, the frickin' Confederacy, they think, okay, they have this silly notion that these cultural differences are a, a, a some sort of bred into the genetics, that it, it's a genetic problem. That, you know, so they're denying, like, the existence of Egypt and, you know, the civil, whole civilizations that existed thousands of years ago. Um, you know, that weren't European-based and all of that kind of crap. And so they just have this silly notion that only Europeans function or some other kind of serious flaw in their understanding of what makes the difference between people. And the difference isn't made by this stupid race shit. The difference is made by this cultural shit. And that's where the liberals fail because they don't want to embrace culture. They don't want to say, yes, there is a need to have a consistent and reliable and dependable culture. And yes, it doesn't have to be built around a god. It doesn't have to be built around being a Christian or a Muslim or any of this other horse shit that we know isn't genetic. And none of the other features of culture are genetic either, okay? So your culture can just be built around the fact that you have a constitution and you believe in some kind of principles, okay? But you have to defend them. And, you know, the Jeffersonian logic is, you know, if your welfare rights don't aren't allowed to impose on my survival rights, I mean, there's a certain limitation where you can tax somebody out of their house now to take care of other people's problems. And that's all it is. I don't get any benefit. I mean, you, uh, you pay your $9,000 and, and I, ha I have to pay this to exist tax. And I get what back? $300 in services? And the rest of it is going to all these other people who say they have some right to feed on my existence. Well, that's bullshit. Trap claims and respond to it. So anyone wants to say that the current... One of the biggest problems with... 
the black community in the U.S. right now is... It shouldn't even be a black community, but yes, if we want to say that we can't get past some segregation in the sense that we can't get past some differences and they're just too obvious like the midget community and the tall people community and the whatever and we'll all have to stick with some sort of notions of community the point is is it's not a community it's a culture and it's a culture that just doesn't give a damn okay about being in any way any more connected to the culture that it's this uh, that that dominates and they, there's every impression of their intolerance. Their intolerance with integration. Their intolerance with playing by the rules. Welfare program related. Um, just, yeah, just respond to both, of, or just one of those two papers that I'm going to link in the low bar. Okay, papers. Oh. All right, so moving on. But it's all, you know, politics. I just, I don't, I've given up on having any conversation that has any politics in it because it's all just bullshit. The solutions have always existed and they will never choose them. The, the fact that people are irrational, they keep voting for unsustainable, they keep voting to deficit spend, it doesn't make any sense at all. Borrowing money from who? Okay, you're making the rich richer by giving them more and more pieces of paper that say you owe them. We owe them. They have more and more and more and more pieces that they hold saying we owe them. Well, who's going to pay those? When the shit hits the fan, they're going to say this is real. And what are you going to say? Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, they get paid first. You get fed later to this mass of this planet. Like, when you jump up and down, you're actually affecting the gravity of the Earth. You, you do the equation. I mean, it's actually in there. Okay, yeah, when you jump up and down, you're affecting the gravity of the Earth, and therefore you're connected to the whole cosmos, and, oh, it's all so wonderful. <laughs> no, you're a bug. Okay, you're a bug with little bug habits. You have little special little habits of the kind of bug you are. Okay, and that's so in the sense you can start getting a little bit racial or a little bit ethnic, you know, because people want to wear that shit on their sleeve too. I'm Italian, I'm Irish, I'm this, I'm that, and I have little Irish habits, and I have little Italian habits, or I have little Jewish habits, or I have little blah, 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 blah. You're just little silly bugs. What are you doing with your connected to to the universe? The fact that everything you do will affect something else. What are you doing with that power? Are you paranoid and scared to death, as you should be? That, oh shit, I shouldn't have said that word because now somebody's going to interpret that word and blah, 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 and they're going to have a whole wrong thought and then they're going to, you know, kill their wife. Are you thinking about the implications of everything you do and being, you know, stifled by it? No, you're just playing bug. I'm just going to be a bug. I'm just going to talk shit. I don't care whether I give people silly delusions of of accomplishment and function because it makes them feel better. It doesn't matter if it's going to make the world the worst place 10 years from now or 100 years from now. Am I facilitating retarded behavior? Yeah, that's all you're doing. You're just facilitating people who are living shitty lives into thinking they're living good lives. I mean, yeah. We're more cosmic than I think we, we recognize. And there is an integrity to the body, but what we need to go to is this kind of... All right, I'll slow it down a little because I guess I haven't sped up too much. So we'll go down to 125. The world openness that comes from the different sense modalities. So this would be a different way to sort of echo what you were saying, but again, I would try to further it out this way. So, you know... Was it the, the Archimedes, right? The great so they haven't changed at all. That's the sad thing here, right? This is the same drivel, the same wordy bullshit to somehow magnificent size, you know, embiggen, embiggen your role on the inner, you know, embiggen, you're an embiggen human. You're, you're not a, 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 a stupid, moronic, trapped bug. No, you're some, you're changing the Earth's gravity. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. In, in just no coherent way at all. You know, eat another cookie. Discovery of how you can measure the volume of a complex object like a crown, right? He sets it in the water, and then it displaces a certain amount of water. He says, look, this is the volume that this thing occupies. But wow, isn't that so important to know? Everybody needs to know how, how much volume of gold we've wasted on some dopey crown. Ugh. I mean, you could just you know, go on and on about how 
much this couldn't possibly matter. But if I ask about a living body, see, this is where the panpsychism starts. To, I mean, you can tell I'm angling it on the panpsychism. <laughs> uh -huh. When I talk about the, the crown, I can understand that object that is subject to a kind of reductive compositional analysis, and I can say I comprehend the whole of the crown by submerging it and then showing the amount of water displaced and saying that's how it's occupying space. But me, my body, all of us, not only did we grow out of another person through nutritive commerce and metabolism and, and really... <laughs> nutritive commerce? <laughs> yeah, parasitical growth. Uh, right. You know, that's how the whole thing is. It's just a parasite. The, the animals don't get pregnant on purpose. They just get stuck having a parasite grow inside of them and then force its way out. Oh, God. I wonder if he had to have children, how many he would have. Very complicated processes, unlike that. Pro well, he has chosen not to have any, as far as I know. So, but I just mean if he actually had to give birth, whether you think this whole magical life thing is all that magical. But oh, yeah. I say that I occupy space. I don't occupy space in a way that a thing does. Like I could take this pen and I can put it in a drawer, but it doesn't feel the confinement of the space. Oh, so this, you know, he's been making this argument for ten years now. Yeah, we're not pens. So what? What is this? Okay, I mean, he doesn't even think the brain is the story. He thinks it's the uh, hormones and all this other crap is doing something valuable. So your ability to add 2 plus 2 or to add, I shouldn't drive 20 miles over the speed limit because I might kill a kid by accident. Um, that capacity, our capacity to understand risk, to appreciate risk, to do all of this kind of stuff, to do evaluations, okay, to... to to predict the future, to, to force the future by understanding what makes the future turn into the future. By understanding cause and effect, I can understand what I'm causing, the effects I'm going to make, the ones I'm going to invest in. That feature of us, the capacity that we can do that, um, yeah, it makes us different than a pen, but frankly, we're doing it so badly all right, there's absolutely no evidence that the, any humans on this earth are doing it very well. Um, so why make the distinction? The pen is less dangerous. We have this capacity to use this scheming tool to figure out all kinds of ways to engineer ways where, you know, we win and they lose. And that's what we're doing with it. Whereas a living organism, it's through its sensory capacities, its mo sensory motor capacities. So and it's not just representational. This is absolutely crucial. I think it's one of the biggest failures is for people to imagine that everything is just representational. Now, once you move to the difference between seeing, hearing, and touch, you realize that, okay, like my eyes right now are registering and they're representing the distances I am from the wall. Yeah, so he's th saying that the images in your head aren't just representations. You're not just seeing the essence of something in terms of its symbolic representation that there's a real world in there well there's no real world though it is just symbolic and the only question is have you accurately defined what it is or are you missing its big point so i could find an uh, you know i could find a piece of rock that looks like an arrowhead <laughs> okay i can understand it. it's just a stupid rock or I can understand, oh, this was actually a weapon actually used by a Native American and it actually, you know, went right through the neck of another Native American. Um, you know, I can understand it for what it is um, or I can understand for what it isn't. I can make up a fake story that isn't true. I could find a pointy rock and think it was an arrowhead and it never was my legs do a lot more than represent that distance they're the they're the source of those distances like i could take myself closer to or further away from that and to that extent motility the fact that my body has a directionality that my hands have things within certain reach and there's a sort of spatial temporal dynamic to that and then hearing has a dynamic that intersects with that and then vision has an intersect and then once you get language that comes back in and, and then communication technologies start looping back and double backing over you get this so it's like making magic out of a puddle of vomit. I mean, you can make this argument that the vomit has all this complex stuff going on here. There's these compounds, the acids are interacting with the basis, and it's producing this wonderful odor, and it's doing this, and it's doing... It's a puddle of vomit, fucker! 
So he's just she's just saying that almost anything a piece of shit does is some kind of a magical thing. <laughs> you know, the little smell lines coming off the shit. Oh, it's all just so magnificent. Look at it interacting in the universe. Piece of shit. You're just so full of shit. This massive intersecting dynamic of, of modes of space and time where yeah. when we ask this question about consciousness and where does it start, how did it begin, though that part of... Ouch. It started with fucking ouch, okay? Ouch is power, okay? So your brain figured out how to whip your brain, right? And that's all it is. One program figured out how to whip the other program, so to speak, um, and that was power. And now we can motivate something by taking the whip away. Applying the whip, take the whip away. That's all you need now. You don't even need carrots. You just need a whip. Okay? And that's kind of the origin of consciousness. It's just a way of saying good thinking, bad thinking. You recognize that you can't walk through a tree. Your brain rewards you by saying, Oh, I feel so much better when I don't bang into trees. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Look, I missed banging into a tree. Oh, that feels so cool to miss one. You know, your brain rewards you for getting the right answer. It's just whipping you, okay? And so, yes, we are capable of being logical because the basic function is, um, you know, just do this proper adding of 2 plus 2 and get the right answer and, get a, and your brain gives you a little cookie. Oh, it makes sense. It has symmetry. Okay, cookie. And instead of doing that, though, people are doing it just to, for the purpose of making them, their egos feel better. He's just feeding human ego and saying, oh, you're really something and you're really doing well and you're wonderful and, you know, actualize your wonder, your power to make poos. Us, which is asking that question, is a highly mediated social historical accomplishment. It already depends upon calendars, awareness of yeah. things. So I mean, these and religions and... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, a pile of bullshit, right? Ninety nine point nine 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 percent of everything human beings have written down in the last ten thousand years is crap. Okay, so yeah, it's just crap. A tiny little percentage of the kernels of of realization, the ones that led us to understanding evolution and the DNA molecule and all that. That's the stuff that means something. All of this mush about what spiritual bullshit and all this other, these silly stories of of um, sons of gods and walking on water and all this other mush has done no human any good. Let me, um, I want to get to the panpsychism issue and because I certainly don't think that um, a crown or any artifact is conscious or has a soul or anything like that. Um, but and, I, and I, what you're saying? But he thinks the whole guy a guy does. Yeah, <laughs> the whole plant put together. Oh yeah, no, that's a smiley face for sure. Earth is smiling, happy. About space time and the way that living organisms sort of bring forth their own space time envelopes and that the organism. Beneath. So this is where the bad physics gets woven into the bad philosophy, and it's just so bad. The magical space time. You're never going anywhere. Time is one thing in one direction. You're never going anywhere. You're never changing it. You're, it's just a silly conversation. Environment are actually part of, they're one system. Life is the system of yeah. relationship between organism and environment. Whatever, so that's what you think it is. It's a, it makes machines. And part of the machine's function is being able to create its future, being able to navigate the other machines. So it has these brain features that are intended to make it able to gain social power, be a group leader, create a gang, do lots of things that'll mean that it's okay going to win and the other suckers are going to lose. I mean, uh, whatever the guy was called, the you know, the Ivan the Great, <laughs> whatever. The one in Asia, right, who they found his genetics in like billions of people, like he really, you know, um, seeded a, a whole generation of humans. Um, but he didn't do it by himself. He did it because he had the skills to make a gigantic army that killed everyone. So, you know, but that's all this is. So don't play a game that these stupid machines are doing anything but screwing each other over. Um, and organisms and one another, but so um, 
the sex organs, right? There's something about the sex organs that connect us to a transpersonal past and future. And transpersonal past and future. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's just too stupid, right? They're extra, co they're, they're organs that we're actually using to, to defecate, to, to, to poo our waste and shoot it in someone else's direction. Um, <laughs> you know, that's all we're doing. We're farting in something else's direction. Yes, we have, we have, um, um, it's, it's, you control both of those ends and every organism does that. I mean, most organisms on earth are controlling what they eat and controlling, you know, the ones that are thinking, I have a brain. And that's really the main function of the damn thing is to control what it eats and where it poos. And there's something about the sense organs that connect us more to a personal sense of here and now. And then language, though, allows us then to reconnect consciously to that, the way that our sex organs connect us to a deeper path. So again, the, the organ doesn't connect us to anything. The sex thing does. So it's only one part of the function. So it's just getting it way wrong. Um, and it's, again, in, in its natural context, it's not doing anything magical 99.99% .99 of the time. It's not doing that, okay? Most of the time, it's just staying out of the way while the organism feeds on the world. And again, the, the whole purpose is to do what? To replace yourself with a new model for absolutely no really good reason, except that's what DNA says is functionality, is making new copies, and obviously you have, to, you have to burn the old ones because they take up too much space. So you have to kill the old to have the new, because you have to make new ones to make new ones that are different. And it's all just about modifying the gladiator. But the gladiator will never be anything else but a gladiator. He's still going to be fucking stuck going to the same job. And all you're doing is saying, well, this year your armor is silver. And next year your armor will be gold. And you're just, you know, and then it'll be aluminum. And then it'll be titanium. And all of them have advantages and disadvantages. And so all you're doing is morphing this thing into different shapes. But you'll never be a good thing. It'll never be something better than that. It'll always just be a dog. Whether you make the dog this big or you make the dog this big, it's still just a dog. In, in a future language, then I think, in a way, is again, if, if these, um, if you think of the top and the bottom half of the body as uh, just grown from the same root and in a way fractally repeating one another, language. Fractally repeating one another. If I do that, I'll definitely hurt my brain. So if I dare try to practically understand how my feet have something to do with my brain, oh, fuck. Which takes on, language is, is profoundly, um, the Logos has this erotic and sexual dimension to it that is connecting us through time in a way that I think is closer to the way that um, our genitalia are connecting us oh, through Oh, God damn. <laughs> I mean, it's just so bad, right? You can't describe, yeah, this is too silly. They really are dickheads. ...time than it is to the way that our sense organs are connecting us to the here and now. Like language takes us out of the here and now of the sensory present and puts us in touch with, I think, that deeper dimension of reality that our, our sex organs connect us to and our genes connect us to unconsciously. Does that yeah. make sense? Speak of sperm, they come from common roots. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Oh, for yeah. sure. There's, you, you screw with people's heads when you talk with them, literally. Oh, no. I mean, this is really reaching, right? That, that we have metaphors... <laughs> for fucking somebody over, uh, you know, fucking with their brain, or, you know, I mean, yes, but this has nothing to do with sex, trust me. Well, you're, you're, there's a fecundity that comes from... A fecundity? <laughs> he didn't say that, did he? Oh, I have to remember that one. Oh. You know, we'll have to come up with a tarred version. Fucktunity tarred. The sowing of seeds, I mean, the dissemination... You know, the sowing of seeds. So again, that's what you think you're doing. So that's how you look at it. You just look at yourself as a seed. You're just saying, I have to plant my seeds in fertile soil or something. You really think about the seed part of it, right? You're not just jerking off or having sex. No, you're you're seeding. That's all. That's what it means to you. That's that's how you, on a personal level, relate to it.
I don't think so. These are all models that are, you know, just you know, there's some way to talk about communication in terms of. So doesn't it feel like culture uh, in general, but it, like especially um, modern uh, individualist cultures are, they react against that with this sort of like shame or this sense of like um, an unwillingness to, to recognize the way in which we. No, no, an unwillingness to recognize that obviously. In the past, all of these little subtle things became understood. I mean, the whole way you transmit diseases and all kinds of other stuff. And they didn't really understand microbes and all this stuff, but they understood that a certain kind of behavior might lead to you more likely dying of smallpox. And so there was lots of this stuff, especially in the Jewish traditions, a bunch of rituals about how to do something so you don't make it bad, okay? So nobody dies. And, uh, you know, and some of them are preposterously silly like lamb's blood over you know your your door or some other kind of thing that seems rather silly i don't know who thought that was a good idea that that actually worked you know it stopped the disease demons um but anyway that's all it was about our whole our whole hang up about our sexuality clearly was made out of the fact that we got into these relationships that were sort of monogamous you know, and obviously we started putting limitations on how much we could express our interest and how obvious it was and all of that stuff. And that's why people started wearing more clothes is because they became more and more private in their life. Privacy was sort of uh, something you didn't have, okay, because you all lived in one cave and all this other stuff. And so people became to be, started to cherish the ability to be in a relationship that wasn't dictated by everyone and that was just dictated by uh, two individuals and those two individuals became uh, bonded and uh, they became a pair and they and they produced families and children and all that stuff and all of that stuff had to have some protection from our rapey nature we are not just ourselves yes. um, and that we are constantly involved in these acts of um, generation with one another. Yeah. Uh, well, let's, uh, okay, let's get at that. So, I mean, I think I want to go back to the, the sex and the touch stuff and, and the site. Oh, I really, <laughs> this is just too creepy. So, yeah, well, forget it. Oh, yeah, whatever this is, uh, you know, this. Uh, like there's some deep philosophical significance to sexual desire no i'm sorry it's a biological function it's an impulse like eating it's just not something to build a narrative about uh, how brilliant life is because we get hungry and horny i mean it's just too freaking silly so we'll do a little bit more of this and get the hell out of here so sorry that actually shows people especially the bottom quintile of income earners 50 years ago pre-great society, the bottom quintile. Well, yeah, it's no point in comparing those bottoms because the bottom now is getting paid so much less than the bottom was back then. So the whole point is, is that on bottom scale wages, you could still raise a family. One man with a crappy job could afford, uh, if it was you know careful in how he spent his money, to put a roof over their head. And you can't do that now, so that's obviously it's gone. Okay, I mean, they're they're the the buying power of the uh, low income is so substantially reduced from what it was because we've degraded the wage base. I mean, the minimum wage in real terms is lost value. That's the difference of the, the I guess the economic strata. We're far poorer than they are now and causally some of their improvement in terms of getting richer compared to how they were five decades. So again, it's more nonsense. Again, the property, the, 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 the tax, the amount of money you have to pay to get into a house has gone way the fuck up. So you have to have, you have to do this in some sort of recognition of what has gotten more expensive, what's got less expensive. Yes, your phone's got less, ex well, I don't even know if they have, just because people have so much, you know, they're doing so much internet on their phone. But anyway, um, <laughs> so regardless, some things have gotten less expensive, but these important things that 
define your capacity to, you know, create a base to live on, have gotten, uh, the, the burden's gotten higher. The, the bar has gone higher. Obviously, people are in so much debt. I mean, you, you bought houses based on paying for half the house up front in the past. I mean, you know, we're nowhere close to any of that. People lease cars. I mean, it's a completely different world. Decades ago, some of that is down to the Great Society programs. And if it weren't, if the welfare trap were an actual trap that just keeps people stuck in a perpetual cycle of poverty, you would expect that in countries that have far more generous welfare programs, you'd have more people stuck in that sort of cycle, and we don't see that. And I'm not, I, I'm not sure you don't see that, so you'd have to show me statistics about these countries that are doing so much better that have what we have, which are histemic cities built out of these populations. So you can't compare like Norway or something. You have to compare a real place that has real mega cities, and then tell me about how you know all of these poor people don't exist. I'm not going to list the standard society. We, we know the standard societies. We know everything from Northern Europe to Western Europe. Way more generous welfare programs, and yet people are nowhere near the bottom quintile, second quintile, all of it. The mobility, you see far more mobility. Than yeah, but they have far more social, institutional, higher education, and they have all of these other things. So again, there's no point in comparing it because there's almost an obligation that's built into the culture that you actually become accomplished. So even the welfare people in Europe are raised with a notion that they have an obligation to their country, to their civilization, to rise above it. The whole point is, is that the welfare state now thinks it's entitled. It doesn't have to participate in any of this. It can be anti-corporate, anti-American, anti-everything, and just say, I'm going to live listening to rap music all day. So that's the difference. You want to say that's not a difference. It's a huge fucking mindset difference. They feel like they're trapped. They're, they're being, they're enslaved still and all of that kind of crap. So they don't have any, um, sense of uh, integrating, you know, being part of the civilization, fixing it if it's broken, fighting with it, doing it through the channels. They have no respect for any of that as a concept. So, you know, the Muslims want to come here and take over the country. They don't want to come here and make America great. No, they want to, they want to clearly do something very different in terms of changing uh, America into Iraq. And you see stuck in a this bad lifestyle too, let alone um, an inability to escape poverty. You see that far less. So if it... Uh, yeah, and again, I would bet you that in these other countries, there isn't a bunch of people defending people who have 25 kids and no job. <clears throat> I'm sure the welfare state in those countries that provide more, provide more with the understanding that... We're not going to sit there and, and applaud, okay, when you put more burden on all these other people. That's the real disconnect. The welfare state doesn't see itself as being takers. They see themselves as being entitled. Were welfare per se, then... Even abused. Now, I would argue that there is something fundamentally abusive about birthing people into a world where they're going to likely be stuck in some shitty job for some under uh, comp you know for less than a fair compensation and that's the prospect the average human born in America has that's that's their likely um, um, destiny and that's not much to live for so I can see why they're discouraged and less than enthusiastic but what makes the difference and I uh, Part of the argument is going to be, well, part of the argument is, is you have to be culturally connected. And the fact is, these other countries don't have to worry about the cultural disconnect. Well, they didn't in the past, right? So I bet you they're going to start having these problems because I bet you the Muslims in Europe don't feel very connected. They don't feel Norwegian or, you know, Swedish or, you know, they don't feel any of that stuff. So they're not going to feel any obligation to fix those places or make those places better because they're really not part of that tribe.
they've kidnapped people from other tribes and brought them into theirs and they're they're going to try to change the tribal mechanism they're not going to adapt to the tribal mechanism you would, yeah, it would actually track the higher levels of social spending as a well whatever this whole conversation is this in my opinion useless um, the rich suck and the poor suck it's just a fact okay both of them are a menace both of them are a blight both of them st steal uh, what's that light blinking like that for power going to go out I better finish up um, <clears throat> both of them are a stealing value both of them are wasting value okay on yachts and on uh, you know some sense of and I, I have the right to have 15 dogs and force you to pay for them I'm using dogs as an example of children but same difference it's the same kind of obnoxious attitude that somehow uh, the other people who don't have dogs have to pay for you to have a dog why, why should they do that why should they subsidize your behavior they've chosen not to create a burden and you're saying I have a right to impose my burden on you and clearly they're doing that in some obvious way where they know you're not gonna let babies starve to death on the street it's extortion it isn't some kind of I've earned it it is obnoxious and people should be a little pissed off but again the people who are pissed off about the poor seem to love the rich and the people who you know hate the rich love the poor I don't understand why they don't see both of them as what they are both of them are out of bounds both of them are cheating all right cheating the civilization cheating value they're both a waste they're both wasters all right so I'd say the rich are worse right because they waste even more <laughs> you know, okay they, they possess a higher they control a higher percentage of the resources and devote them to the silliest of purposes anyway till the next time and such where I will continue to try to narrow the conversation to this simple argument that we're just silly stupid rats and <laughs> there's really nothing to defend about this whole uh, the existence of these rats it's just just a picture of Scooby-Doo you know the whole human race is just comes down to being some kind of picture of Scooby-Doo and the simple question is you can crunkle it up and throw it in the garbage and nobody's the universe will not be less because you got rid of Scooby-Doo